I'm Yewon Kim from Hammam Church in Chuncheon. I used to live a dark and oppressed life because I couldn't meet my parents' expectations. Then I met the risen Jesus, and I'm now always free and happy whether I have success or failure. I'd like to share my testimony with you. When I was a child, my family wasn't happy, and my parents argued often. So I was always anxious and had a habit of watching for their moods. After they fought, my mom would often cry. Every time that happened, my heart ached so much that I wanted to do whatever I could to comfort her. My dad wanted to be a historian, but he had to study law in order to financially support his parents. However, he failed to pass the bar exam. My mom also came from a poor family background and didn't get a chance to pursue her own dreams at all. Then she met my dad and got married. My parents had a lot of expectations toward me. My mom especially wanted to live her dreams through me. She always said, Yewon, I'm you and you are me. I like that she considered me herself. I thought that was how much she loved me, so I thought I should live up to her expectations. When I was four years old, my mom began to knit a bright yellow sweater for me so that I could stand out among all the kids entering preschool. On the first day of preschool, I put on my bright yellow sweater to look as cute as I could. The kindergarten was affiliated with an elementary school, so the principal and many teachers of the school were at the first day of school ceremony. On the way to the ceremony, my mom held my hand and said, Ye Wan, pay attention to the principal when he's talking. Don't look at anything else except his face. Don't embarrass your mom, okay? So for the entire time the principal talked, I didn't move an inch. I just looked at his face. Other kids chatted, played, and called out to their own moms. But all of a sudden, the principal said, Who is the mom of that little girl wearing the yellow sweater? Please raise your hand. Your daughter has excellent concentration. How impressive. And in an instant, my mom became someone all the other moms envied. Mom looked very happy, so I was very happy. Starting from the time, I began to think if I was a good student and got compliments, my parents could be happy. My parents wanted me to attend a prestigious college, become successful, and get married to a good man, and I wanted to do all of those things and make them proud. Around the time I entered middle school, my parents opened a restaurant and they worked their hardest from early morning to late at night. Then they came home completely exhausted. And they used to say they worked so hard in order to support us. My mom said that when she was young, she wasn't able to buy a single book because she grew up in a poor family and she said that she made money so that we could pursue whatever we wanted. So in high school, I took all kinds of after-school classes and private lessons. There is no lesson I haven't tried. However, whenever I tried to study, I would get sleepy and couldn't concentrate. I wasn't healthy, so as I sat at the desk, my feet became painful and swollen. After studying at school till late evening, my shoes didn't fit my feet, so I came back home with slippers on. I wanted to be a good student, but my body wouldn't cooperate. My mom saw my report card and got extremely angry. She said she didn't have any hope for leaving because she had gone through all kinds of hardship for nothing. And my dad said he was so disappointed and didn't understand why I wasn't good at studying. I felt so frustrated with worries. Whenever I felt that way, I knelt down before God and said, God, please help me. I prayed in tears every day. I took the college entrance examination, but I couldn't get into the college I wanted, so I had to take the exam again. I registered with a prep class and studied like crazy. 
As I watched my workbooks piling up on my desk, I thought that this time I would get into the college I wanted. My mock exam scores were getting higher, and my prep class teacher told me that if I kept this up, I would get into the college I wanted. I prayed, God, please help me just this once. I prayed earnestly as I studied hard, but my actual exam scores were much lower than I had expected. I ended up getting into a college I had never imagined for myself. My dad didn't speak to me, and my mom burst into tears as she sat in the corner of the auditorium during my college entrance ceremony. My mom's dreams had collapsed. I was also dejected, but I needed to comfort my mom. So I said, Mom, it's okay. I will work hard and transfer to a good college. I comforted her like that, but I couldn't escape from my dejection. No matter how much I cried, I didn't feel better. I felt like God had ignored all my prayers and that He had abandoned me. After I entered college, someone said to me, Yewon, you are third rate now. You have to expect to be treated that way. Because the person was someone I had trusted and followed. I felt like my life was officially confirmed as third rate. Because I thought success was an essential part of happiness, the thought I was third rate filled my head and it made me truly unhappy. I hated college life, and I was ashamed of belonging to that college because people asked me what college I went to when I first met them. I didn't want to meet new people anymore. Most of the people around me went to prestigious colleges, and I felt dejected and wondered why my life was in ruins even though I believed in God and went to church. Not long after I started college, my mom got depression. My parents' business flourished, but their conflicts were getting worse, and my mom felt extremely lonely. Her depression symptoms were getting worse and worse. She would tell me often that she wanted to die. Her eyes showed that those weren't empty words, and I got so scared that I couldn't sleep at night. I thought terrible things might happen while I was asleep. I woke up several times during the night to make sure everything was okay. I clung to God. I fasted for four to five days at a prayer house as I cried out, God, save my family. Let my parents change and make us a happy family full of faith. I prayed a lot with tears, but I didn't feel assured and I always felt anxious. I decided to study abroad in the U.S. My mom had started going to church, so I felt a bit relaxed about leaving my parents behind. I really liked being in the States. I didn't need to be constantly watching my parents' moods or trying to relieve the tension in the house. I stayed with my brother who was already studying abroad. Since it was just the two of us, I didn't need to be anxious and it was really nice. I felt free being apart from a mom who considered me her other half. And it didn't matter what school I went to, I could start everything fresh. So I no longer had to pray in tears. I didn't have a reason to look for God earnestly and seek His help anymore. That was when I was able to see the true state of my faith. Through a friend of mine from the school, I came to think about Islam very seriously. This friend was very sure about what he believed and urged me to believe in Allah. He didn't eat anything all day during Ramadan and his faith seemed very firm. Before I used to think that Muslims were just scary terrorists. But I was amazed to find out that they had stronger spiritual experiences than I ever had. He said they saw visions prophesied, and had dreams about the future. His grandmother had the ability to heal people, so the people of his hometown hardly ever went to the hospital. His grandmother healed them all. I was confused because none of the things I had prayed so hard for had been fulfilled. But the faith of the Muslims looked unshakable 
and seemed to have power. Of course, I told him we must believe in Jesus. Jesus is the only way to salvation. But even as I spoke, I felt hesitant. That's because my faith had begun with my spiritual experiences. But I realized that those experiences couldn't be a proof for me to believe that God exists and that Jesus is God when those Muslims had experienced the same things I had. I passionately told my friend that Jesus is God, and he also passionately said, Jesus is just a prophet. If you believe in a man, you will go to hell forever. After you die and meet Jesus, he is going to say to you, I never told you I was God. Why did you believe in me as God and rebuke you? When he was telling me with such confidence that Allah was the one and only God, I became anxious. I thought, then, who is the real God? But I didn't tell anybody about what I was thinking. I felt conflicted and fell into a deep dilemma. I was thirsty for the truth and was afraid of the eternal hell. I really wanted to know who would end up in hell. All the Muslims trying so hard to live a holy life or me. So, so who was the real God? Was Jesus God or just a prophet? I prayed for all of these thoughts to disappear because I thought those doubts about Christianity were from Satan. But they didn't go away. They only grew deeper in my mind. So I read books critiquing Islam from a Christian perspective and books about Islam with a neutral perspective. I even read the Quran. But I wasn't able to find out what the truth was. Who was the real God? The one who created heaven and earth? The one who answered all prayers? I really wanted to find the truth. Meanwhile, I was invited to the retreat at Hammam Church by one of my friends. During summer vacation, I came back to Korea and visited the church. There, I met a young lady. She preached the gospel to me, but I felt really mad at first because she was telling me the gospel as if I was a novice at church. Then she asked me, Have you ever been to heaven? If you haven't, how can you believe it exists? Have you ever seen God? If you haven't, how can you believe in Him? I had never thought about these questions and I couldn't answer her. My pride was hurt, but I was frozen in place. She said that there was a proof that Jesus is God and the creator of heaven and earth. The proof was that God, who had come to this earth as a man, had died and had been raised from the dead according to the scriptures. Amen. And that was Jesus. Oh, Jesus is God. The proof that I had tried so hard to find was the resurrection of Jesus. Amen. I felt like the Holy Spirit was standing before me and telling me these things. I found out that the disciples of Jesus who had betrayed him when he died gave up their lives as martyrs while preaching that Jesus was raised from the dead. It became clear to me that they had seen the risen Jesus. No one could give up their lives, insisting that they had seen something they had actually never seen. I had clear, certain evidence. Now I had the answer to the question, Who is God? that I had tried so hard to find. Jesus was God, and it only made sense that He was to be our Lord. Amen. I came to know that I was the person who says, Lord, Lord, in Matthew chapter 7. I came to know that I had begged God in tears to solve all of my problems, but I had never believed in Jesus as the Lord of my life and my heart. I was exactly like Satan who went against God in heaven to try to become God himself with fear in tears I gave a repentance that felt as if my insides were being torn apart God I didn't want you 
and I acted as my own master. I will never be my own Lord again. When I confessed this, Jesus became the Lord of my heart. And immediately, hope was poured into my heart. It was a passionate hope to share the news I had heard with other people. I ran over to my parents' restaurant, and I told them what I heard over and over again. My dad looked embarrassed and went outside. My mom listened to me till I finished since I looked so sincere, but her face looked worried. The young lady who worked for my parents was listening beside us. Then she said she wanted to receive Jesus as our Lord. I was very happy and said, Let's have you accept Jesus. And she received Jesus in tears. A few days later, I wanted to pray at night, so I went to my parents' restaurant after it closed. I could pray freely there because it was right next to the mountains. The young lady who worked for my parents was staying in an adjacent room, and she said she wanted to pray with me. Before we started to pray, I preached the gospel again. I said, we must repent and believe in Jesus as our Lord. Amen? But she couldn't say amen. So I asked her, amen, again. Then she suddenly began to tremble and cry. I put my hand on her shoulder and I was able to proclaim, Jesus is our Lord, with great confidence and courage. Then she started to scream, amen, really loudly as her body continued to tremble. After a long while, she stopped screaming, and she repeated my prayer after I told her to, and then said, Amen. When she fell asleep, I looked in the Bible. In Acts 8, it said that evil spirits came out of many, and there was a great joy in the city where the gospel was preached. So I realized that the gospel has great power. Amen. After going back to the U.S., my life was totally changed. I realized Success and failure didn't have much meaning. At the time, there were people around me who had achieved success as doctors, lawyers, accountants, and so on. I told them with an excited heart that Jesus is Lord and that we should believe in Him as our Lord. They said that they already knew what I was talking about, but they were still worried about their own businesses and circumstances and had their sights on worldly things rather than heavenly things. As I saw this, I came to know that real success is meeting the risen Jesus and living a life for Him. Amen. I finally understood why the Apostle Paul considered everything a loss in this world and pressed on to receive the heavenly prize, and I also hope to live such a life, preaching the gospel and seeing people become children of God after hearing the gospel came to be the most joyful and thrilling work to me. This was the mission that Jesus had given me. And I realized that a life fulfilling this mission was the best life ever. Amen. So I preached the gospel to whomever I met and shared it at school and to classmates whenever I had a chance. And I came to have a small church where I could give worship with people who wanted to listen to the gospel and believe in Jesus. Though I was very far away from my mom, she was the first to recognize my changes. My mom called me in America to talk to me about her worries or to talk about the ways she had been upset because of my dad. Every time, I repeated the gospel to her. She wondered the reason for my change, so she visited my church. There, she listened to the gospel and received Jesus as her Lord. Amen. Now her depression is gone and she lives a very happy and free life by the power of the gospel. When she changed, my dad also opened his heart and received the risen Jesus as his Lord. Amen. God, let me remember how I had prayed in tears for the salvation of my family and he let me know that he had answered all my prayers. Now I'm back in Korea, I share the gospel to children as I teach them English. And God let me meet many people 
who have had failures in life and are frustrated. When I meet these people, I tell them with assurance that our victory and defeat aren't determined on this earth but in heaven, and that the success in heaven is much more important than the success in this world. My parents hoped I would make their unfulfilled dreams come true. And that was my hope too. But now my family's dream is for many people to believe in Jesus, who gave up his own life for us and be saved. Lord, you listened to all of my prayers and my pleas for your help and led me to the best life ever. I love you, Lord. Thank you.